Hi friends, most of you watch my channel without subscribing. Please subscribe if you like my stories. Have a good rest. It was just another ordinary Saturday morning when everything started to unravel. My wife Karen and I were sitting at the kitchen table eating breakfast with our two kids, our 15-year-old daughter Chloe and 14-year-old son Joshua. Chloe was excitedly telling us about her plans to go to the mall with her best friend Lucy that afternoon. Lucy said her mom will drop us off at the mall at 1 p.m. and then pick us up at 5. Is that ok? Chloe asked. That's fine, sweetie. Just make sure you keep your phone on in case we need to reach you, I replied. Chloe had just started high school in September and was adjusting well so far. She loved hanging out with her friends on weekends. Joshua was in his last year of middle school and was into video games and basketball. He spent a lot of his free time practicing shots in our driveway. As I took a sip of my coffee, the doorbell rang. I'll get it. Chloe jumped up from her seat and rushed to answer the door. I could hear her talking and laughing with someone. A minute later, she came back to the kitchen holding a small package. Look what Lucy dropped off. It's my birthday present, she exclaimed. Chloe's birthday wasn't for another week, but she loved getting gifts early. Oh, how nice. Why don't you open it? Karen suggested. Chloe eagerly tore open the packaging to reveal a box from 23 London, one of those DNA ancestry kits. Oh, cool. I can find out all about my genetics and family history and stuff. Can we do this? Please, please? Chloe begged. I don't see why not. It'll be fun for all of us to learn more about our ancestry, I said. Karen nodded in agreement. Chloe carefully opened the box and took out the instructions. It says each person has to complete the saliva sample test. So Mom, Dad and Josh, you all have to do it too. We spent the next 15 minutes taking turns spitting into the test tubes and boxing them back up to send away. Chloe was thrilled and couldn't stop talking about what kind of results we would get. Little did we know, those test results would completely append our family. Over the next couple weeks, life carried on as usual for the Taylor family. The kids went to school and activities, I went to work, and Karen managed the house. Chloe's birthday came and went, she had a fun bowling party with her friends. The 23 Anma test kits were just something fun we had done, and then forgot about as we got caught up in our regular routines. About three weeks later, I arrived home from work one evening and found Chloe staring intensely at a piece of paper. What do you have there? I asked, peering over her shoulder. It's my 23 Andrew results. They came in today's mail. Isn't it so cool? I'm 36% British, 13% German, 8% Irish. She rambled off the percentages. Very neat. Did anyone else's results come? I asked. Note just mine so far. Chloe replied, clearly absorbed in examining her ancestry composition. I went into the kitchen where Karen was prepping dinner. Chloe got her 23 under results today. Looks like it tells you all the regions your ancestors were from, I mentioned. Oh good, I'm glad it came. It'll be interesting to see ours too whenever they show up, Karen said. Over the next week, Joshua and I received our test results as well. We had a fun family night looking over the different ancestral backgrounds revealed. Chloe and Karen were a mix of Western European, while Joshua and I had some Southern European and Western Asian percentages mixed in. We ordered a pizza and pulled out our old photo albums, reminiscing about our family histories. Remember Dad, when you took us to visit that tiny village in Italy where your grandparents grew up? Joshua said. Do you think that could show up in my results? For sure. I bet that explains where you got that 15% Italian from. I told him. We continued chatting and exchanging family stories late into the evening. The 23 anime test had been a fun experience for our family, but Karen's results were still pending. Another two weeks went by without Karen's test results arriving. Mom, when are you going to get your results? Chloe asked one morning at breakfast. I want to see what cool countries you're from. I'm not sure, sweetie, but it should be any day now, Karen replied. She didn't seem too concerned about it. A few days later, I arrived home from work 
to find Karen sitting sullenly at the kitchen table, holding a piece of paper. My results came today, she said flatly. She seemed upset. What's wrong? I asked. She hesitated before responding. Mine are quite different from the rest of yours. I'm almost entirely Greek and Southern Italian, only 2% British. I laughed. Is that what we're worried about? That's perfectly fine. Our results don't all have to match up. But look, Karen continued, Chloe has no Greek or Southern Italian. How is that possible if I'm her mother? I stared at the results again. She was right. There was no overlap between Karen and Chloe's ancestry. I felt a knot form in my stomach. I'm sure there's some reasonable explanation. My voice trailed off. But deep down, I knew this pointed to only one possibility. One I couldn't bear to face. Just then Joshua and Chloe arrived home bickering as they came through the door. They stopped short when they saw the serious looks on our faces. What's going on? Joshua asked timidly. Karen took a deep breath and explained the discrepancy in their genetic test results. Chloe and Joshua looked confused. But what does that mean? Chloe asked. Does it mean we're not actually related? I could see the panic rising in Chloe's eyes. It's going to be ok. I tried to reassure her. But the truth was, I didn't know if it would be. The atmosphere in the Taylor household was tense over the next few days. Karen and I could barely look each other in the eye. We knew we needed to have a very difficult discussion, but the thought of it overwhelmed us both. I decided I couldn't put it off any longer and gently brought up the topic one night after the kids had gone to bed. Karen, I know this is an impossible conversation, but we need to figure things out, I began. She started to cry. I'm so ashamed, she choked out between sobs. You have every right to hate me. I walked over and put my hand on hers. I could never hate you. We've been together 21 years and have two amazing kids. But I need you to be honest with me. Karen took a deep breath and told me everything. Two years before Chloe was born, she had a brief affair with a co-worker named Derek. She got pregnant but assumed the child had to be mine. Once Chloe was born, Karen left her job and we never saw Derek again. She convinced herself it belonged in the past. When I saw those test results, I panicked, Karen cried. I never meant to hurt our family. My heart shattered listening to her confession. I was overcome with anger at her, at Derek, but also at myself for failing to notice at the time. I knew there was only one way forward. We need to get a DNA test to confirm for sure. I told Karen. She sadly agreed. Neither of us were ready to tell the kids yet until we had definitive proof. A week later, the paternity test results arrived in the mail. Chloe was not my biological daughter. Karen and I were grief-stricken, but more importantly, we needed to tell Chloe and Joshua. I gathered them together and broke the news as gently as I could. Kids, the DNA tests show that Dad isn't actually Chloe's biological father. Many years ago, your mom had a relationship with someone else. Chloe burst into tears. Why would you do that? She screamed at Karen. She jumped up from the couch and ran to her room, slamming the door shut. Joshua sat in stunned silence, trying to process the revelation about his sister. I'm so sorry, Karen choked out through sobs. I never wanted this to hurt you. But the damage was already done. Chloe refused to speak to Karen. She stayed locked in her bedroom the entire weekend. On Monday morning, Chloe came downstairs with her backpack ready for school. I'm going to stay with Grandma and Grandpa for a while, she declared. I can't be in this house. Karen and I didn't stop her. She had every right to be angry. Maybe some time and space would help repair their relationship. But deep down, I worried nothing would ever be the same again. In the weeks after Chloe moved out, the mood in our household was somber. Karen spent most days holed up in our bedroom, sobbing into her pillow. She had tried calling and texting Chloe numerous times, but received no response. I checked in frequently with my in-laws to see how Chloe was doing. She's still very upset. She doesn't want to come home until Karen is out of there. Her words 
my mother-in-law explained sympathetically. Joshua became withdrawn and sullen. He missed having his sister around. At 14, he was old enough to understand the severity of the situation. One evening, Joshua came to speak with me privately. Dad, I want to live with Grandma and Grandpa too for a while, he said. I can't stand being in this house anymore. I pulled him in for a hug, tears stinging my eyes. Ox son, I understand. You go. It's only temporary. But in my heart, I wondered if my family coming back together was only wishful thinking. With both of the kids gone, Karen, and I had no distraction from confronting the painful reality of our situation. We barely spoke, just exchanged basic pleasantries about household necessities. The weight of the silence became unbearable. One evening, I gently suggested we start seeing a marriage counsellor. Karen reluctantly agreed. At our first session, Karen could barely get the words out to tell the counsellor what had happened. I had a brief affair and got pregnant. Chloe isn't my husband's daughter, she confessed before breaking down into heaving sobs. I took over and explained how we revealed the truth to the kids and they were now temporarily staying with my parents. Your family has suffered a major trauma, the counsellor said compassionately. But with effort, many couples can still rebuild trust and move forward after infidelity. He suggested we each start individual counselling, as well to process our own emotions before continuing couples therapy. We left feeling a small dimmer of hope. Maybe it was possible to pick up the pieces. I just feel so numb to all of it now. I told my therapist, David, during a session. When we first found out, I was unbearably angry. But now it's like my emotions shut down. That's very common in situations of profound betrayal, David said. You're guarding yourself to avoid feeling the intensity of the pain. I sighed. I also feel guilty. Karen's family hasn't spoken to her since they found out. She's completely isolated. As hurt as I am, it seems cruel. You're allowed to feel compassion for her. Despite what she did, David reassured me. Her family will process it in their own way. But if you want any chance of repairing your relationship, keeping some connection is important. I took his advice and started gently texting Karen things like, Hope you're taking care of yourself and thinking of you. Baby steps, but it easy to see war between us. In Karen's sessions, she worked through understanding the reasons for her betrayal. I was so insecure in those days, she told her therapist. I think deep down I believed Annex would leave me eventually, so I self-sabotaged. Though still extremely painful, we were starting to gain some clarity and closure around the circumstances of the affair. But the question still remained, could we salvage our marriage? Several months had passed since the truth came out about Chloe's paternity. She and Joshua were still living with my parents. One weekend, I went over there to take the kids out for lunch. Chloe watched silently out the window as we pulled up. Hey Dad, Joshua grinned, bounding out to the car. Chloe followed behind slowly. At the restaurant, the conversation was stilted. I tried asking the kids about school and friends, but got only one word answers from Chloe. Are you still angry? I finally asked her. I know this is so difficult. She sighed. Not as much anymore, but it hurts. You and mom were everything to me. Now, I don't know what's real. A tear slid down her cheek. My heart broke for her. One thing that will never change is how much we love you, I said. We want you to come home when you're ready. For the first time, I saw a glimmer of softening in Chloe's eyes. She didn't say any more about it, but I hoped it meant she might be open to trying again. Karen and I continued marriage counselling. After months of slowly rebuilding trust, we decided it was time for the whole family to do a session together. My parents brought Chloe and Joshua to the appointment. The kids glared angrily at Karen and barely spoke. Finally, the counsellor gently prompted Chloe. What would help you feel safe being back home? I want mom to stop lying to us, Chloe said sharply. For our whole lives, she pretended to be someone she wasn't. Karen nodded. You're completely right, and I'm so terribly sorry. I thought I was protecting our family by hiding what I did. But I see now that was a horrible mistake, and I have regretted it every day since. 
It was a tense and emotional session, but an important step. For the first time, Cloak could express her feelings of anger and betrayal, and Karen could apologize directly. We left feeling cautious optimism. It would take time to fully mend the wounds, but we all wanted to try. Several weeks later, Chloe and Joshua moved back home. The initial days were uncomfortable. We were all unsure of how to act around each other. Karen cooked Chloe's favorite meals and tried engaging her in conversation about school and friends. But Chloe gave only one-word answers and quickly excused herself from the table. In family therapy, the counselor helped us set some new ground rules to re-establish trust. Karen and I would have an open phone policy with the kids. They could check our call logs, texts, emails whenever they wanted. Total transparency. Joshua adapted back to home life pretty quickly, but Chloe remained closed off. One day, I noticed her looking at a picture of the two of us from when she was younger. She quickly shoved it back in the drawer when I entered, wiping a tear from her cheek. My heart ached for her. Several months went by and life fell into a routine. Chloe still wasn't fully comfortable being home, but Karen continued trying. She frequently invited Chloe into the kitchen to cook together, something they always use to bond over. One evening, Karen made Chloe's favorite lasagna dish. When she called her in to eat, Chloe reluctantly came to the table, but barely touched the food. Is the lasagna ok, sweetie? Karen asked gently. Chloe shrugged. I guess so. Karen sighed. Chloe, I hate feeling like I have to tiptoe around you. I'm trying so hard to make things better. What can I do to help you trust me again? Help me understand. It's more what you don't do, Chloe said softly. The constant apologies and forcing interactions. Just give me space and I'll come to you when I'm ready. Karen wiped away a tear and nodded. You're right, I've been smothering you. I'll back off, just know I'm here when you want me. It was painful, but Karen resolved to focus on rebuilding the relationship on closed terms. And slowly, Chloe did begin coming to her more often. Over a year had passed since the 23 anime test appended our family. The intense hurt was finally fading into the background. We would never forget, but we were learning to live together again. One evening at dinner, Chloe turned to Karen. Mom, I'd like for you to come with Lucy's family and I on our beach trip this summer. If you want to, that is. Karen's eyes filled with grateful tears. I would love that, sweetie, thank you. We'll have such a wonderful time. After dinner, Karen pulled me aside, crying softly. I think she's finally starting to forgive me, she whispered. This has been the hardest year of our lives, I said, but we've made it through together. I pulled Karen close and kissed the top of her head. Though scared, our family was healing.